I don't know if people fully appreciate how much goes on the week of the NCAA tournament other than basketball. Once There's a that, lot of noise. It, okay. Once all that noise starts hitting your plate, how do you compartmentalize all the different things you have to do? Well, there is. I mean, there's a lot, and I talked to the guys about it that, you know, uh, you know, with the NCAA tournament brings a ton of noise from a number of different directions, and I always tell them that, you know, you've got to turn down or turn off the noise. And it comes from, you know, your phone, the family, the friends, the college basketball fans. And you have to find a way to turn it down or turn it off. And a lot of times the guys ask me what noise is. And, I, you know, I tell them that it's anything that doesn't make you a better person, player, or teammate. Um, you, ha- you have to um, turn it down or turn it off. And for the same thing for me as a coach, if it doesn't help me become a better person or a better, better coach, then I just don't spend any time on it. I mean, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is, you know, these are student athletes. And so, you know, they'll go to class today and tomorrow, then they'll be gone the entire week. And they've got media requests. Uh, we've got all different types of practice times and things that we have to adjust to and uh, scouting reports on the fly because we don't, for us, we don't know whether we're playing Howard or Wagner at, um, at this time. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but, you know, we've talked about all year, focus on what is real and our real is our preparation for us for the NCAA tournament so that we can play our best. But you can even kind of tell it in your voice a little bit that you're still recovering from a long week of basketball here this past week yeah. in Washington, D.C. Just I just kept yelling at you all the time. <laughs> That's, you understandable. <laughs> That's understandable. That's um, understandable. What, what was this stretch like? What, what were your thoughts on the team play? Obviously, there were some good moments, some not as good moments. Yeah. Just some general thoughts on Carolina ACC tournament in total. No, I was just really proud of them. Um, you know, obviously, we came up short of our goal to win um, the ACC tournament title, but to come in as a number one seed and reach the final in the way that we did, uh, played against a really good Florida State team for the third time. And I thought, um, you know, we were really tight on both ends of the floor. Everyone played extremely well. And then we played Pitt for the second time. Pitt, who I don't care what you look at as an NCAA tournament team. They got dudes at every position. And for us to come away with that win was huge. And, you know, we just didn't play well enough to beat State. You you have to compliment them. They stepped up for them to win five games in five days. That's an accomplishment. That's that's something to congratulate them on. And they played better than us that night. And, you know, I really believe that our guys – Wanted it so bad that at times I felt like we got out of character on both ends of the floor. But um, this group has always um, loved being together, loved being a team. And we're really excited about the uh, NCAA tournament coming up. Got out of character, how? I felt like, you know, from an offensive standpoint, just, you know, in terms of we always talk about purpose and pace, having pace, but a purpose to our screens, our cuts. And I felt like, um, things were going too fast from the standpoint of guys wanted it so bad they were um, over aggressive in terms of uh, trying to make plays that necessarily weren't there defensively. I didn't think we were sharp in terms of our communication on guarding different types of actions and um, um, reacting to how hot they were, uh, especially from the outside. Burns hit his first three of, I, th- I know it was this year, maybe his career. And so um, those little things um, that we can learn from and grow from and, and get ready for the uh, NCAA tournament. Is there, I remember I've always heard that Coach Smith always said that you build momentum in a tournament. And mm-hmm. so do you feel like there's a hard kind of reset leading into the NCAA tournament, or do you think there's carryover from what has been happening the last several weeks? I think both. You know, it's unfortunate that we didn't win the championship, right. but we had won eight in a row. Correct. So <laughs> that's <was> pretty good, <laughs> you know? And so, um, but also, you know, a reset in terms of getting to the NCAA tournament. I, You know, one of the things – I learned from Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge and Coach Williams. Um, You know, we 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 put the NCAA tournament really in three parts. You know, right now we're going to the Charlotte tournament. I think it's just too much to look at 68 teams, six games. Let's win a championship. Let's 
none of that can happen unless we take care of business in Charlotte. So let's let's concentrate on the Charlotte tournament, see if we can win two games. And if they do, they'll they'll invite us to the Los Angeles tournament. And so we break it up there. And I just think it's a great way for the guys and it helps them eliminate the noise by just focusing on what is in front of them. And what is in front of us is either Wagner or Howard. And if we're good enough to win that game, either Mississippi State or Michigan State. So that's where our focus needs to be. And I think that helps us um, hopefully moving forward throughout the NCAA tournament. I think one thing that's easier to say sitting in the stands than on the bench, well, pretty much anything, really. <laughs> but specifically. Yeah, I'd like you to sit in this seat, okay? Yeah, 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 I would not. A <laughs> little, bit, little bit different. Yeah. Uh, when, a, when an opposing player gets like two fouls in the first half or four fouls early in the second half or something, we can all sit there and say, oh, just go at that guy. Yeah. But how do you coach your team to try to exploit that while also playing the game of basketball that, that they know how to play? Yeah, you know, um, you know, DJ Horn had three fouls in the first half, and, you know, we did. We wanted to attack him, and I felt like a couple times we did. And um, But, you know, again, you don't want to get out of character, but you do want to challenge those guys um, that have foul trouble and to maybe get them on the bench or uh, be able to get shots because of, you know, them not wanting to get a foul. And so those are things that you're always thinking about. Um, it's a lot easier in terms of a big guy, you know, throwing the ball down low to the post. But that's something that we think about and and, and, and adjust to throughout the game. Obviously, it's great to, um, to get the opposing team's better players in the foul trouble. But that's why we say – we want to dominate points in the paint through post-penetration offensive rebound because that's where you get fouled and get to the free throw line. You don't lead the ACC in free throw attempts by shooting a ton of threes. So the way that we play helps us just you know, organically go at guys and make guys defend and hopefully get them into foul trouble. You have, as has been documented and we've talked about, you've had, you have plenty of older guys on your team. Yeah. But you also have some guys, including some of those older guys, who haven't really played NCAA tournament. Harrison Ingram's never been in an NCAA tournament. Cormac mm-hmm. Ryan's played a couple games, but not many. Ellie Cadeau, obviously a freshman, hasn't played. Do you have messages for those guys? Uh, Jalen Withers, uh, that group of guys who play key roles for you, but maybe haven't been in this event or had much experience in this event? Well, you know, no, none of the guys had been in a situation of being number one in the ACC during the regular season. Yeah most of the year and then winning the ACC tournament title and being the number one seed. And so everything is really new to this group. Um, One of the things that I did talk to them about after we found out selection Sunday was that, you know, our preparation, our practice is all going to be the same. I just came from practice. We had same practice that we've had all year. Nothing's changing. We're not preparing differently. We're not practicing differently. Um, our scouting reports and, and the way that we play, all that is going to stay the same. And so just the consistency of that, I think, calms guys down and understands that you know we're in the NCAA tournament, but it's just like any other game that we've played throughout the entire season. Um, what was that event like when the team was at your house? We didn't have it at or, our or house. Where, where were you? We at? had it here. You were here, okay. We had it here and – um, it was really cool because a lot of guys had never been in this position before to yeah. see, you know, their name of their team come up and and to come up as a number one seed, you know. And so it was really cool um, to be able to share that experience with them. It's really neat to have us together as a team and to share that together because, you know, it's been a long year and, you know, Yes, we all have personal families, but here's a family here that we spent a ton of time together. And it was just a celebration of the season that these guys have had. And I was just really proud of them and happy for them. And um, just to see the excitement of them getting ready for the NCAA tournament was just fun to be around. All right, it's Carolina on Thursday afternoon, either Wagner or Howard. If the Tar Heels <laughs> advance past that game, it will be a Saturday game against Mississippi State or Michigan State. Have no clue on what potential time that game would be should it occur. Coach, always great to see you. Thank you for your it's time. It's good to see you. We're checking in with checking Coach in. Davis, presented by CR Legal. <laughs>